Hi, welcome to The Careful Diver. My name is Juji Carminati and today's topic is boat diving. A couple of minutes to get you comfortable if this is the first time you're gonna go dive from a boat so that you know the ins and outs and you don't feel completely lost when you're there. But here's the thing I want you to know above and beyond, above everything else, people who run dive operations are usually really nice. They are in the hospitality industry. They are very open and comfortable. And as long as you're not being a douchebag and you're not being unsafe, they're gonna be really nice. So first off, just remember that they are there to make it a really great experience for you. So let's start with the super basics. If before you get on the boat, take your shoes off. Yes, I take your shoes off. If you go on a boat, you are gonna be on it barefoot. Some people may have some water shoes that they use to get, that's fine if that's your thing, but no shoes on the boat. In large part because it dirties and damages the deck. And can you imagine everybody bringing their dirty, filthy shoes onto this beautiful, pristine deck and then it has to be washed every single day. So first, no shoes. Second, Ask before setting foot aboard. Yes, literally. You literally say permission to come aboard and the captain will be like, uh, yeah, and then you get on board. And even if he gives you a weird, that doesn't matter. It is the polite, courteous thing to do. Also, it's a safety issue. Like you wanna make sure that the boat is perfectly docked and that they're not doing something that is might be dangerous and that there's not a reason that you shouldn't get on the boat. So just ask, hey, permission to come aboard, boom. And they say permission granted and you get onto the boat, done. The standard setup is the one that I'm showing here or here. I know, probably there. <laughs> I'm joking. This is the standard setup. The standard setup is that there's going to be benches and you're, you're going to get a little slot on the bench and that's your spot. You're going to put your stuff underneath it. And if you want more about that, check out our Boticat um, video because I talk about that. And there's gonna be two tanks behind your spot and those are gonna be your two tanks. You set up your gear right there behind you and you sit in front of your tanks and that is where you're supposed to be. That's it. Next, getting off the boat. How do you get off the boat? Uh, well, there are several techniques, two principally. There's either giant stride, which you definitely should have covered in your open water class. And the giant stride will usually be either off the back of the boat or off the side of the boat if there's a little door. Or you can do a giant roll backwards. That was actually common in Cozumel. Uh, you sat on the side of the boat and everybody rolled back at the same time. When you do that, make sure it's synchronized because if you roll after other people roll, you're gonna smash them and that's very unpleasant. And make sure that you're holding your mask strap and your reg and that you're nice and compact. Roll your way back and relax and the water will catch you. The other thing that it would be helpful to know is that there are actually two types of ladders to get back onto the boat. There's a fins off ladder and the fins on ladder. The fins on ladder is a ladder that you can go up to because it doesn't have any uh, bars on the side and you get you put your little fins like this, you get to the top, poof, poof, and then usually what they will do is that they will help you get them off you. The crew will help you get them off you. Another thing you can do is that you can just take off the back strap. That's what I do. And then you go up with your back strap off, but you still have your fins on, you get to the top, and then you literally can just put your foot on one fin, pull your foot out, put the foot on the other fin, pull your foot out, and let the crew pick up your fins for you. If it's a fins off ladder, then what you're going to do is that you're going to use one hand to attach yourself to probably a line is better than the ladder. Why? Because if it's a little bit choppy or a lot choppy, the ladder will keep swimming up and down. So you are better off going onto a line that is usually along the back. We're gonna talk about lines. A line is a rope. On a boat, lines are ropes. That's just what you call them. There's a line along the back. You're gonna hold on to the line. Don't let go. The moment you take off your fins, you are like, you can't, can't go anywhere. You take off one fin. And then you will try, you will put it around your, you put the strap around your arm like a little bracelet. And then you take off your other fin, wherever you want to do it with your hands. You take off your other fin, you put it around your other hand like a little bracelet. Get yourself up, grab the ladder, go up, and then get off. Another thing you can do, which is another technique, is that you take off the fin, you hand it up. You take off the other fin, you hand it up, and then you pull yourself up and you go up. Or you can hold on to the ladder if the water is calm, take off a fin, hand it up, take off the other fin, hand it up, make your way up the ladder. That is a fins off situation. 
There is also, uh, on some boats, I have never experienced this, but some boats also have rising platforms. So on some boats, you can just get onto the platform, the platform will go up, and then you will just get off the platform onto the boat. And if you have experienced that, you're lucky you for the luxury experience. I have never had it. I have heard it exists. I have never seen it. It's just the way it is. Okay, this next part is about parts of a boat. You will hear people talk about the bow, the stern, port, starboard, outboard, inboard, you know, and you're like, uh, okay, does it have a bow, bow, a bow, bow? I don't know. Okay, here's what it goes. Bow is the front, okay? Stern is the back of the boat. And then port and starboard, okay? If you are looking at the front of the boat, port is to your left, starboard is to your right. For years, I could not remember them. But you know how I know that? Port is short, like left. There's four letters in port, there's four letters in left, and that's how I remember it. And now I just know it because I know it, but I did that for a while. So port to the left, starboard to the right. Bow to the front, stern to the back. Next, lines, so many lines. Okay. Boats will set up their lines in a variety of ways depending on their particular practices, the dive sites, the weather, and whether they are anchored or moored. So this is generally speaking what I'm trying to express to you. It's a lot better to see them visually rather than trying to remember all the names, but I will go through the names for you. So in this first situation, you will see this setup. There's a line number one that goes from the mooring line down to the bottom. And there is a line at the back, which is line number two, which goes to a float. Line one is the anchor line or the mooring or the down line or the descent line, because that is the line you're gonna follow when you are going down. The back line, the, the back, you know, well, you now you know it's a stern line, right? Okay, a stern line has been referred to as the tag line, the current line, the safety line, or the trail line. The point of this line is to be able to have divers hang on to it while they're waiting to go in or go out, right? To go down or go up. And it's especially critical if there is a current because it means that you can stay nice and safe holding on to right behind the boat. The second configuration is another one we have seen. So you will still have your down line. You will still have your trail line, number two. And then there's gonna be a line which is called a descent vertical or equipment line, which is um, number four. Now, here's the reality. Right here, number four can be a descent line and it can just be a safety line. It can also be the line that you use to do your safety stop, but Sometimes people will hang weights on it or they will hang an emergency tank or a safety regulator or some other safety equipment. And then it gets called a safety line or a hang line. And so that's why we've referred to it here as 4C because there's different configurations of line four. This next configuration is where you see that there is the down line, number one, and then the stern line, number four. You still may have your float line that can, can still be there, but then there might be a line number five, which is underneath there and is called the granny traverse or horizontal line. And some places will also refer to it as the Carolina rig. And that is because what they will ask you to do is that they will tell you to jump at the back of the stern of the boat, go down the, the descent line, and then go along your traverse line to hit your mooring or anchor line and go and finish your descent there. Then there's another setup, which is actually a little bit more common, where you will have your descent line, number one. You will have your um, float line, usually it's there. And then there will be number three, which is a granny horizontal safety or current line. And for example, if you've ever been to the Spiegel down in the Keys, that's really common. And what happens is that you will literally drag yourself along that line number three at the surface. It's, it's basically at the surface is, is not quite correct, but it's, I, it's like, two feet underwater, right? It's just underwater. You drag yourself all the way to line number one, which is your descent line, and then you go down. 
and the boat can be anchored, moored, or neither. And that's the next thing I'm going to talk to you about, which is a hot drop. Uh, a hot drop just means that the boat can't stop. And so there, well, I can't anchor or more. It's going to stop, but it can't anchor or more. So the boat will slow down, will stop. People will jump. They'll say, dive, dive, dive. You jump off. You do your giant stride or your backward roll. And then the boat, once the divers are down, will clear and move on with their lives. And then you will, uh, you will do your, you'll just go straight down. There's not going to be any lines for you. You're going to go straight down, dive. And when you come back up, the boat will come by and pick you up again. And that is a procedure. That's something that happens, especially if there's surfy or choppy and uh, winds or water and the boat doesn't feel comfortable stopping, but it's still a perfectly good day to go diving. So there's nothing untoward about doing it that way. Okay, let's talk about equipment. What equipment are you gonna bring on your boat? Well, you're gonna bring gloves or at least a glove, one. Okay, here's why. Some places you're not allowed to have gloves at all. And I tend to kind of just, um, fudge a little when that happens. There are some places you can't have gloves because people touch the coral. So if they don't have gloves, they're more likely they're not gonna touch stuff. So what I do in those cases is that I will have a glove just on one hand and I will have the glove just for the descent and then I take it off. And the point is this, that descent line, that number one line is dirty. And I don't mean like yucky, yucky, dirty. I mean dangerous, dirty. It can have fishing hooks. It can have um, all sorts of fiery, coral. It can also have um, jellyfish. Uh, uh, they're jellyfish type creatures and it burns. It can hurt you. And so that's why I will usually have at least one glove just so I can make my way down and then I'll take it off and I'll put it away if it's a no glove area. The next thing you should definitely have is a whistle and or a surface air horn. And I will have links uh, as always in the description for stuff that I particularly like. Uh, I'm really lucky actually, my uh, BCD has a little whistle in the chest strap, like a teeny little whistle. So I always have a whistle with me, but you definitely want an auditory way of getting the boat's attention. And then secondary, you also, I mean, not secondary in the sense of less important, but as a second method of alerting the boat to your presence, you want to have a DSMB or an SMB with a spool. And the DSMB is the big orange sausage. They come in pink, yellow, they come in all sorts of colors. You want it to be really big. You want it to be nice and tall. You want it to, you want to know how to use it because that is how the boat is going to find you if for some reason they have to swing by to catch you or you lose yourself and you end up way off the mooring or the anchor line or if there's an emergency, right? You wanna have a water bottle. Dehydration is a risk factor for DCS. So have your own water bottle uh, at all times. I actually uh, created little bottles that say DCS prevention device. Um, and so you should definitely have a water bottle with you and drink from it uh, often. You want to have both a mesh bag and a dry bag links in the description to some examples of stuff i like the mesh bag is for your wet equipment your dry bag is where you're going to put your phone your t-shirt your shorts uh, your wallet anything that you don't want to get wet you'll put it in the dry bag you'll close it up and you'll put it at the front of the boat and then you definitely want to have all of your gear whatever that may be so if you're renting that's fine but if you're not renting double check that you're bringing your gear with you because otherwise you are going to have to rent and it's not a guarantee that the people that you're diving with will have rental gear in some places those two things are completely separate like the boat operators are not the gear rental people so be sure to check on that you want to make sure you bring defogger uh, I have my favorites, again, link in the description. I will never tell you I love a product and then not tell you how to go get it or what it is. Uh, 500 PSI is my go-to, I absolutely love it. And then there's another one that is pretty good too. You wanna have reef safe sunscreen. Now, I hate sunscreen with a passion of a thousand suns, ironically, because it's supposed to save me from the sun. But every time I put sunscreen, it ends up in my eyes and then it burns and then I'm crying the whole damn dive and it's infuriating. So what I do is that I actually put stick sunscreen because I found that to be less um, infuriating and it doesn't run into my eyes, but have a little sunscreen because you are gonna be out on the boat and it is going to get pretty sunny and you are gonna burn. And then I personally also always bring coconut oil and uh, reef safe 
hair conditioner. Some boots have it. Shout out to Conquer Public Divers and Tavernier in the Florida Keys because Ashley always makes sure that there is fantastic, wonderful, reef safe conditioner on board, but we can't count on that everywhere. So I make sure I have coconut oil for before I go into the water and I, I get the one that's comestible, like literally the stuff that we eat. And then uh, I will put that in my hair before I go in the water and then as soon as I come out, I put on my reef safe uh, conditioner and then I do that again for the second dive. And that usually, um, are those are the little extras that I bring. The things that you will expect to find on the boat and you don't have to bring. Defogger, I know I said you should bring it. Here's the thing, the one you find on board is not always the best. And so I have my favorite, but there will be defogger on the boat. If not, they'll at least have uh, Johnson & Johnson baby shampoo in a spritz water, in a spritz bottle, so you can use that. They will always have weights. They will always have tanks right? Because that's what they're bringing. And they'll always have an analyzer. So you don't have to have your own analyzer. You don't have to bring it. If a operation that is offering nitrox diving does not have an analyzer, just don't go. It's unsafe. It's not standard. It's not a proper way to conduct uh, diving operations. Go find another place. That's a red flag. And that's it. I hope this was helpful. As always, I'm Juju Carminati. I'm the careful diver. And as always, dive safe.